Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Poe, and today I am back from my summer vacation uh, from filming, and so I'm going to be catching you up on some of the books that I read during that time. So today I'm doing weeks 25, 26, and 27 of my 2023 reads, and then later this week I'll catch you up in the other weeks as well. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. First, I finished Wintersmith by Terry Pratchett, which is book three in the Tiffany Aching series. My husband, Zush, read this out loud to me. We've been reading through all of the Tiffany Aching series, and this one was also just such a fun experience. Tiffany Aching is this really wonderful, kind of stubborn, um, very intelligent, girl who we see grow up throughout this series and she is in the Discworld series and she is a witch and so really in this book she really starts coming into her own powers and she ends up getting caught up with this sort of elemental spirit called the Wintersmith and it's all about her trying to figure out what to do about that. Um, like always there's just so much humor and so much cuteness in this but also a lot of really interesting mm, discussions about what it means to be a witch, about you know who Tiffany wants to grow up to be, about what her values are. So it's got like a lot of heart and a lot of depth to the story as well. Just like some of the other stories, I do feel like the action in the Tiffany Aching series has a weird long tail where maybe halfway through you feel like you have almost a peak of the action, but then it just keeps going. And so I think that that was just a little bit off, but even so, I really thoroughly enjoyed this book and I highly recommend this subseries of Discworld for anybody who's interested in that because it's just, it's just lovely. So I gave this four and a half out of five stars. Next, I read Her Good Side by Rebecca Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon is an author whose adult romances I absolutely love. And this, I believe, is her first YA romance. I was interested to see kind of how that would be different and how it would work, and it worked so well. I adored this. This was, this was just so lovely. So this is basically a story about uh, a teenage girl who kind of has a reputation of being a little bit of a crybaby and a little bit sort of afraid of relationships, but uh, that was kind of cemented in her freshman year of high school. But now, you know, she's older and she wants to actually start dating, but all the guys are kind of wary of getting involved with somebody who has no experience in dating. Um, and so she asks a, a friend that she makes to fake date her. Um, and this guy is somebody who is really rather shy, but he's uh, grown a lot taller in the past year and suddenly a lot of girls are interested in him, but he just doesn't know how to interact. He is a little bit uh, unsure of what to do. And so they decide, you know, we can both solve our problems by fake dating so that we get that experience and so that we can go out and actually, you know, be in relationships with other people, except that maybe then they start to have feelings for each other. Uh, I love the fake dating trope and I thought that this was just so sweet. The characters were wonderful. I really liked this, you know, um, development for both of them in terms of, you know, how they want to interact in a relationship. And because this is fake dating, they have so much communication and discussions about, is this what I'm supposed to do? Does this, is this a good response? So there's so much communication in there because they've lowered that kind of stress of trying to perform in a relationship. And it's just adorable. And I love the sort of family and school dynamics. There's some awesome family members in this um, and really great friend groups. So it's got a ton of wonderful things as well as just being such a sweet romance. So I absolutely loved this and I gave it five out of five stars. Next, I read How to Keep House While Drowning by K.C. Davis. I think I heard about this originally from Rachel at Colinati, who I will link below, and I am so glad that I picked this up. It is very short. I listened to this on audiobook, and I think it was around three hours, uh, and very, very helpful as well. So this is basically a nonfiction book talking about how to deal with um, feeling overwhelmed, especially, uh, with all of the tasks that you have to do, the care tasks in your life. So that's, you know, cleaning your house, but it's also just taking care of yourself and your family and anything else that needs to happen. And, uh, Casey Davis does such a great job of really separating out, um, the moral judgments that we have on ourselves when we don't perform these care tasks the way that we think we should, uh, from actually the functionality of those tasks and it's just it's so well done it's really to the point 
her examples are so helpful and good and there's just all of this about really being gentle with yourself and you know, not doing things because you should, but rather because they make your life better. Uh, I think that if you at all struggle with feeling like, you know, oh, I'm so bad at handling this, or, you know, oh, I never get this done right, I think this is a really great book. I, I don't struggle necessarily with a lot of the cleaning tasks and things like that that she mentions, but I still found so much value in this. I, I really, really loved it. And again, it's only three hours on audiobook. It's such a quick read, but I think just very helpful for helping you frame the way that you think about care tasks. Um, and I, there's a great discussion in here too about things like how you split up chores in a partnership and focusing on things like equality of rest rather than work and how that's much fairer for both people. And there's just so many great discussions in here. I gave it five out of five stars and I would really, really highly recommend this for everybody. Then I read A Duet for Home by Karina Yang Glasser. This is a middle grade contemporary that is about a girl whose family ends up becoming homeless. Her father passes away, her mom enters a deep depression, and she and her mom and her little sister are sort of kicked out of their, of their apartment and they have to go into some homeless housing. Uh, and it's about her dealing with that transition, basically, taking care of her family since her mom is is not really capable and dealing with a lot of the feelings of shame that uh, being in a homeless house makes her feel as well as starting to get to know some of the other kids who are in that homeless house and starting to kind of understand uh, a lot of the social issues and aspects regarding homelessness. Um, I thought that this had like a lot of heart. It had really great characters. Uh, there's this kind of really great friendship that she forms with another kid, uh, especially bonding over classical music. And there's just so much about the way that homelessness is treated that is, is great. I do think that the ending was a little bit um, wrapped up nicely, but even so, I thought this was a really great contemporary middle grade um, with, with a lot of great heart. So I gave it four and a half out of five stars. And lastly, I read Witch King by Martha Wells. I love Martha Wells' Murderbot series so much, so I was really excited when I heard that she had this new release out. I haven't read any of her fantasy before, so this was a really uh, fun experience just to see what her fantasy writing is like. I found this to be quite a fun read, actually. Um, I think that the story itself is very interesting. It kind of is a, a dual timeline, so we start sort of in the current timeline where there is this guy, the Witch King, who has been kind of, I guess, in a coma, you could call it, but he's been magically put um, out. And he wakes up and is trying to discover what has happened and what has happened to all of his friends and everything like that, and goes on this quest to kind of figure that out. And then those chapters are interspersed with his life story. So sort of what happened with him growing up all the way through to kind of when he gained some, like quite a bit of power. And there is a lot of really cool world building in this. Um, he is basically sort of this demon-like being that is from uh, an underworld type of place, but he was put into a human body. And that's a common thing for his people. And the uh, humans that he was living with have very like a Mongolian style lifestyle. So they live on these plains, they're a nomadic people. And so there's just like all of this really cool world building about that culture. And his people have been fighting against an invading force that uh, uses a lot of death magic. And so there's a lot of magic in here, a lot of issues of sort of this imperialism and um, kind of mass genocide that is happening and him, him and his people fighting against that. There's a lot of really interesting magic in the way that he uses different powers. And yeah, so I thought that all of that was really cool. I think that um, there's not necessarily as much depth to this story and it doesn't have like the humor of things like Murderbot. So I don't know that it was, you know, like a, a favorite fantasy of the year or anything like that, but I just really had a fun time with it. So I gave it four out of five stars. And then in addition to wrapping up the books that I read while I was on summer vacation, I had a couple people ask me about some of the other things that I was planning to do over my vacation. So I thought I would just talk a little bit of some of the other things that I did and the other media that I consumed, but I'm done talking about books. So if that's all you care about, you can you know click away now. Um, so basically this summer, I just wanted to have like a little bit more free time to goof off and 
I feel like I really did that. So Stush and I did a lot of fun things like just um, going to museums or going on trips or lots of cooking, trying new recipes, uh, lots of just hanging out together, lots of reading out loud to each other as well. And we also consumed a couple of different types of media. So we did um, fewer board games than I thought we would do. We mainly just uh, handled like Kind of video games and, and TV and stuff like that. But we did do some puzzles and that's a lot of fun. We'd love to do jigsaw puzzles. But for video games, we played quite a bit of My Time at Portia, which is one of those, you know, kind of farming, um, construction building community games. And we played this because I am such a huge fan of Stardew Valley, like huge fan of Stardew Valley. I also got Stardew Valley on my phone recently and I have loved that. It's a very different like playing experience because you're tapping rather than using a uh, controller, but I, I love that. So basically I need more things that are Stardew Valley, except that we've played so much Stardew Valley that it's like, okay, maybe we should play other things. So we've been playing uh, My Time at Portia, which is like Stardew Valley, but the animation style is different and it's a little bit focused more on the building aspect. So you're constructing a lot of things and there's a lot of quest lines around constructing things. So that has been really fun. Oh, and I also on my phone got Monument Valley 2, which is like a puzzle game where you're moving buildings and uh, kind of aligning staircases so that your character can walk through places. And it's a little Escher-like and that um, depending on how you move things, they line up in different interesting ways. So that was also fun. I finished that game and I quite enjoyed it. It. Um, and then we've also been kind of watching a couple of different things. So we got Disney Plus, uh, like the streaming service, a little while ago because before my time at Portia, we had been playing Dreamlight Valley, uh, which is Disney's sort of Stardew Valley-like game, but with Disney characters and everything like that. And we had played through all of the content that they had in that earlier in the year and quite enjoyed it. But it also reminded me like, oh yeah, it'd be fun to watch some of these movies. I mean, Disney is good at their marketing, right? Totally got me. But I was like, oh yeah, maybe we should give Disney Plus a try and just try some of these things. And we're, we keep finding things to watch on there. We had watched um, all of WandaVision and She-Hulk and really enjoyed those. And right now we're watching Loki and have having such a fun time with that TV series. And there's tons of other things that I know lots of people have had really positive things to say about, like Mandalorian, which I've never seen. And so it's like, oh yeah, sometime we'll get to that. So we were watching a bit of that, watched some uh, on Netflix, watched some comedy specials, like uh, there is a new one by Hannah Gadsby that we watched. And we've been watching a lot of YouTube as well. We watched quite a few, um, not quite a few, we watch a couple, but a lot in depth. Um, shows. So Sorted is a British sort of foodie show. It's a it's a group of guys who are just very amusing, uh, who do things around food. So they have like cooking competitions and they will do lots of different games, like trying to guess uh, which country a dish is from. Uh, they travel all over and, you know, go and eat at different places. We have a lot of fun watching Sorted and also House of Games. So Richard Osman's House of Games is so much fun. We love that game show and it's just all of these really fun, puzzly type trivia games. So we've been watching a lot of that, uh, as well as there is somebody has been posting episodes of the Australian Bake Off, and that is excellent. It's so sweet and gentle. We've tried different Bake Offs from different countries. The Canadian one, we tried that, but everybody was such they were such bad bakers that at least in the first season that we just couldn't watch. Um, so yeah, so we've tried a couple different ones, but the Australian one is is quite good. So yeah, I think that's kind of all of the media type things that we've been up to, but basically just having a chill, good summer and enjoying ourselves. Uh, but I'm excited to be making videos again. I have so many different videos that I wanna make right now. Lots of things to catch up on. So uh, later this week will be another video catching up on the rest of the books that I read over the summer. And then I'll be kind of back on my regular schedule. So if you guys uh, have read any of the books I talked about today or watched or played anything that I talked about, or if you wanna share how your summer has been, just leave me a comment down below.